Hello, how are you today? So, shaping a tooth in 25 minutes, is it possible? Well, I suppose in a way um, it is possible because we've done the video today, but this uh, type of technique is not for the faint-hearted and I'll, and I'll tell you why. And you also need some sort of um, uh, motor which has an automatic apex locator. So the reason why I say it's not for the faint-hearted is because you have to use the, the correct type of uh, files. It also means that you are not going to use um, the traditional glide path um, hand file technique. You're going to use a glide path file in the rotary. And I say the reason why it's not for the faint-hearted is because there's a, a real risk of fracture in this case. In these types of cases so if you um, if you're too strong or you push too hard with these glide path files they will fracture and trust me how do I know because I have fractured files using this technique and um, so it's not a technique that I use in all cases but um, it's in cases where I feel like um, the the canal space is nice and open and I suppose when we look at the x-ray here we can see that the, uh, the, 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 the spaces on the x-ray, um, the canal spaces are quite open and wide and when we opened up the, the canal space we can see that the, the, the orifices are really really nice and wide. I suppose this technique probably wouldn't be best in, um, in a tooth where the, the canals were quite, quite highly calcified or if you saw on the x-ray you know there was no obvious canal space. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to remove the uh, the composite restoration, and um, this actually looks like uh, some sort of onlay. It looks like an onlay, or maybe the, the just the the edges are, are uh, just raised and a little bit chipped at the edges. That's why it looks like it's sort of out of the tooth. And initially, what I thought was I I took out the the the, the composite restoration, and I um, thought there was decay here, and. When I used my slow hand piece, I, it, it just it just wasn't quite obvious that it was decay, um, so it, it wasn't like um, it, being dragged out nice and easily with this rose head. So I had to use a, a fast hand piece um, just to remove and just access the tooth. And what I'm kind of looking for here is um, maybe a pulp pulp horn or some type of uh, portion where I can just. Uh, sort of drop into the, the pulp chambers because we know with the x-ray the pulp chamber is quite large and we're using a high energy ultrasonic tip here just to try and um, sort of break the, 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 the roof of the pulp chamber and uh, as you can see here um, we've, we've obviously exposed it it's a nice little drop that you feel and what I'm going to use now is these endo Z burrs. Okay, so these got like a blunt end, so it's a non-cutting end. And the great thing about these is you can just drop these burrs into uh, the, uh, the the sort of the space there, and then you can sort of follow the uh, the sort of the, the walls of the, the pulp chamber all the way around, and not worry about perforating the tooth because it's because it's a non-cutting end. And I suppose in a way you can create a, a, a relatively uh, conservative access in some people's cases this won't be conservative um, but you're obviously not going to remove any more tooth tissue that you require by opening up this sort of um, this uh, this access cavity and then you know just just cleaning it up um, using a, uh, an ultrasonic with with water and we can see that there's three very very obvious canal orifices here and then we're just going to fill this up with uh, hypochlorite and start this disinfection process. So I suppose to prove to you that it has taken me 25 minutes to um, to, to complete the shape in this tooth, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a timer here. And first of all, I'm going to start the negotiation off um, in the mesolingual canal with a size 10K file. And the reason why I choose choose the mesolingual is because it's usually the, the canal that's the widest out of the MB one, uh, the MB and the ML. Um, I suppose I could start with the distal, but actually I always start with the ML. I don't, I don't know why, it just cause a habit. And what I'm doing here is I am just ensuring that the coronal third of this canal is open before I go down with my, uh, with my automatic apex locator. And you can see here that I've plugged it into my black AI motor and I've just hooked a uh, hook on the patient's cheek and now I'm using a Hyflex 1504 um, just 
just in the canal. Remember, I haven't used um, any type of glide path file with this size 10K file. And what I'm doing here is I'm just letting the Hyflex 1504 bring itself further apically so i'm not pushing any um any sort of um apical pressure if you notice where my finger is here it's just to the side we are doing lots and lots of irrigation that's really really important and then we're going to do another second pass just to ensure that the 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 um the canal is patent because we've got to a zero reading there and i'm using the cusp here just to set the rubber bung so we, the first pass we got, um, we got a zero reading on the automatic apex locator, but I didn't manage to get the uh, the measurements. And now I'm just using a second pass to um, get the measurements as well. So we know the uh, the the length of the um, this this ML canal, and we're going to recapitulate with the size 10k file. So make sure the canal is is still open. And then again, um, we're we're now going to pass with our master apical file. Listen, we're four minutes in and we're already onto our final shaping file. This is how quick this method is. And again, it's the same technique with the glide path file. I'm just very, very gently pushing it, um, let, letting it drag itself down the canal. Okay, lots and lots of irrigants. And if you're getting any resistance at all, you're going to push out irrigant possibly recapitulate and then finally as we get down to the uh the zero reading on this uh on this on this uh, automatic apex locator the um, i've set it for the file to start to slow down and then when it reaches zero it it uh, it reverses out so lots and lots of irrigation and it's done the ml's done seven minutes in and it's done so we're now going to try the uh, the MB uh, the MB canal, and again it's the same protocol. We're going to um, do the initial no uh, negotiation with a size 10K file, and then we are going to use this 1504 uh, gl high flex glide path. And what I notice with this now is um, the uh, the canal is much more calcified than the ML and um the, the the this glide path file doesn't want to push itself um as as, as quickly down uh this 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 mb canal and i'm not going to push it and at some point during this is we 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 get to a point where the glide path file you get a very very small kind of stop and it just doesn't want to get quite to length and straight away what i'm thinking here is this tooth or these these two canals join together so what i don't want to do is i don't want to push down um, with, uh, with 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 this glide path file because you don't want to ledge and you don't want to break the file. So what I am going to do is I'm going to irrigate here and I'm just going to open up the coronal to mid third of the MB canal just to open up the space a little bit. Again, I don't want to push this size 25 um, master apical file to length because again, I don't want to fracture the file and I don't want to ledge the canal and. Basically, again, if you if you watch lots of my videos, you'll know that if you open up the the corona to mid third of the canal, a lot of the time, if you're struggling to get to the apex, opening up this canal can sort of help you reach all the way to zero. So um, I know how far I got with the glide path, and what I'm doing is I'm using the size 25 a little bit further uh, back than that. So again, lots of irrigant, lots of irrigant, and. Here is our first indication that the two canals are joined. We keep, I'm aspirating the irrigants in the mesolingual canal, and um, as I do that, the MB canal is uh, is also aspirating the irrigants. So we so we know it's joining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and just feel around for the join with my size 10k file and feel for this hard stop and kind of make a kind of a, a guesstimation of where these two canals join. You could take a CBCT by the way, I would say that. And I'm going to use a technique that I use in a, in a, in a lot of cases. I, I've used it in the case today actually, is where I put a GP point in the main canal. In this case, this is the ML. And then I'm going to place a size 10K file in the MB. So this is the kind of secondary canal, the canal we think joins onto the ML. And what I'm going to do is just try and mark the GP point here. And you can see 
we have made a mark in the GP point with our size 10k file and this is great because we know that the um, these two canals join we now know that the MB is shaped because that's how it's shaped up the, M, uh, the, the, the the canal to and we're ready to start on the distal canal okay so we're really really motoring along here you know we're 16 minutes in and we've shaped two you know really really difficult canals and the um, the high flex 1504 reaches really really quickly which is a, a lovely sort of feeling and Again, you've got to be really, really careful with distal canals because usually in the apical end, there's a, there's a quite a high, uh, it's like tight bend and this can cause a fracture in the file. And don't forget the the, the, the file is, um, is, is is already shaped too. So it's, it's already under stress, okay. So I've got to zero reading with the with, with the glide path, but the, the 25 vary, the master apical file is struggling. So at this point, I'm thinking to myself, maybe um, there is a tight bend at the end of this canal. And um, what I'm doing is just recapitulating with this 1504 and it does go to length quite easily. So that is a nice feeling. We know that it's probably not a ledge and it's just probably the diameter of the file is probably too large to get to the end. So we're gonna just try one more time with the 25 variable high flex file. Um, just to just just to see if I can actually get to length after this glide path recapitulation and again it transpires that I can't actually uh, get to the end so we're gonna we're gonna do lots and lots of irrigation and then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use a, a lower diameter file so usually um, from 15 to 25 is quite a big step isn't it so I'm now using a 20 um, uh, uh, a high flex 05 file and that is also struggling to get the end so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to make a small bend at the end with this 2005 high flex file and then i'm going to place the uh, the motor into t mode now if you don't know the black ai motor has t mode where um it uh, if you press the button it makes kind of like a reciprocation motion maybe 90 to 90 degrees back into it's like watch winding and what this does is it kind of gets past that difficult kind of ledge that might have been created um or, or the or the difficulty right at the end and once you pass the ledge you press another button and then it spins the file and then that usually shapes the the the, the sort of uh, anatomical aberration out so so we've managed to get to the end with with a with a with a substantial shaping file of 2005 and um what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, use the 25 um to, to 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 length here and again i'm just making a little bend and we're going to put the 25 back into t mode so this is again this is like watch winding you would with a hand file and then as it reaches just to um, near zero we're going to press the button again and then this shapes uh, this 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 turns the motion into into rotary and then it shapes the the canal and there you have it so the tooth is shaped all ready to go and i suppose you'd argue why why do we want to do this efficiently well the reason why we want to do this efficiently is because um, the most important thing in root canal is disinfection. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to shape um, the canal space inside as much as possible, and then we're going to spend loads and loads and loads of time on uh, on, on disinfection. So. Once we've done um, all our disinfection, we are going to prepare for the comb fit radiograph. So in this case, um, what I like to do is I like to um, uh, fit fit all the cones all lovely uh, to length, and then uh, right at the end, I like to just snip the ends off. And what this does is um, it stops the, uh, the 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 GP points being pulled out when you take the the, the sort of rubber dam um, uh, frame off, and then you move the rubber dam to the side and pull the, the GP points out. And if you can see here on the X-ray, um, you know it's 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 really really nice. You know it looks a bit straight. That's always sometimes a bit of a red flag when you're doing these things. But um, I don't think I have. Um, push these uh, these these files too much, so I feel like that is the anatomical sort of uh, the anatomical representation of the tooth. So I'm not. Uh, it's 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 something to think about, but it's not something I'm majorly majorly worried about. And then we just got our final irrigation protocol. Um, again, we're using um, EDTA, 
and we're using our um, uh, ultrasonic uh, tips activator activator tips and then we're going to use a final rinse of um, of sodium hypochlorite so again we're in the sort of um, last bits of this uh, appointment now we're going to just dry all the canals with with these uh, paper points and then again if you're a fan of my channel you, you know that i like to use this one fill bioceramic sealer and again I, i'm not too sure if i've mentioned this but i do like to fill the canal space um significantly with um sealer you know maybe six or six or twelve months ago i used to just put a little tiny bit of bioceramic in but i think on on balance now and and, and a few people have mentioned that um i need more sealer in that and, and and obviously um there's that risk of extrusion which is something that i don't really like to do i don't like a sealer puff um, but I suppose with Biostromic, it's not the end of the world because it is very, very biocompatible and and most of the time it gets resorbed by the tooth, but not all the time. That's a really important um, thing to mention. And um, again, I'm just using um, the heated plugger here just to remove the excess. And then we're going to use our Mac 2 pluggers just to uh, just to condense the, uh, the, the GP uh, right down. And if you can see uh, the X-ray here, you know, it's uh, I, I I think it's a it's like a it's a bit of a it's a it's a nice result. Um, you you'll notice again we were talking about extrusion. The the distal canal has um, extrusion um, in the in the apices, um, but uh, you know I, I, I suppose a huge extrusion is where you see this kind of like bubble um, um, right at the end. But I suppose this one is 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 the extrusion the type of extrusion that you do like because it kind of like mushrooms around the end of the uh, of the root there. So so I'm 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 actually quite happy about that. The uh, mesial canals, you can see that there isn't any extrusion at all, and I suppose you could argue, if you know, to the to the to the layperson, is that the um, the, the the obturation is not completely at uh, the working length. Um, to, to a lot of dent, I get this a lot from general dentists. Is oh, it's not to the end. Um, again, I'll I'll try and put a link in the comment section below about the radiographic apex and um, and the anatomical apex. Um, I'll always trust my uh, my apex locator over the radiograph. And in fact, if you follow my uh, if you watch my ten best tips for root canal, um, then that will explain that um, uh, that, that sort of um, reasoning to, to you quite nicely. So once we've um, done everything, we're just going to give it a bit of a clean clean out. Great thing about biostromics is you can use um, an ultrasonic tip just to remove it. And then we're just going to do the final adjustment of the orifices with my heated plugger just to um, sort of uh, get all of the excess out. And then finally, we're going to uh, use uh, Vitrobon to, uh, to seal the orifices. This is just like a light cure GIC. And I suppose, um, you know, all the way through this, you might be thinking, Sam, there's decay in the tooth. And um, and I suppose, yeah, there was decay. And and, and I suppose maybe uh, half an hour into this, I, I did realise that it was decay. But I will tell you the best tip um, with removing decay during root canal is is not to do it um, at the in the middle. It's really, really, really important because... Um, it's you either remove it at the start where the canal orifices are, are not open or you remove it at the end once you've filled it um obviously it's really really important for you to do it at the start because there's a possibility that you remove the decay and the tooth isn't savable but i knew in this case that it was savable um if you if you remove it once you've shaped the canals um you can uh, uh get all manner of detritus into these canal spaces and block them and again another really really common thing that i get with gdps is and um, what's this very very small kind of very very radiolucent sort of speck at the end here and it's usually where they have removed the amalgam filling and then the little piece of amalgam dropped down into the canal space and that blocks it and i suppose in a way that could lead to um you know uh, a poorer prognosis so overall nice results and um you know as ever um, thank you for watching all the way through. If you have any comments, questions or criticisms, please, please um, comment in the section below. 
Um, we have a new membership program. If you click join button on our on our main page at, on Al of the Pulp in, in YouTube, um, it's for a small monthly fee. You can um, have ex access to exclusive content, and I will um, answer all your questions in video short form. Okay.